commandments to actually do something. All right. So we know that upon their failure, they were actually put out of a place that the most had already been prepared for them. And they were actually working their way back to that place for their lineage, basically, because they got cast out and then they need to re return back to that sort of place. So now we are the children that spring that were not did not come up in the garden of, uh, of, of Adon or the garden of pleasure like they did. Because they put out so they had to pretty much. Hold on one second. So they pretty much had to work for everything. So uh, again, um, what 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 I aim to do is just to show that our forefathers, at some state, there will be uh, some judges, there will be uh, some leadership, some shepherd, some anointed one that would actually lead Israel to a point of uh, safety, a point of rest, and then Israel themselves would turn themselves back to a form of wickedness, and then Israel at some point would come and and start being returned back to righteousness based upon some elders of those that's following Torah. We see where they would come out as one man in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah and Nehemiah when they were actually trying to reestablish and return to Torah and where the priest was reading the Torah to the people. So the people was always trying to figure out how to get back to the creator after we've went so left. And now when we're trying to get back right, they had to still come from the Torah to get their way back. But written within the Torah, a lot of times the people look at the Bible as simply a spiritual book. It is, uh, Maury Dawood, your uh, mic keep coming on mute. Oh, man, I keep, keep throwing an uh, echo in there. If you can kind of, to that, to that. So um, it is much more than just what people take as a church book or just a spiritual book. It is a history book. Yes, it's a book filled with spiritual power from the Most High, the creator that we can read therein, but it's just also it's a book of instructions and it gives us the instructions, and it's also a visual aid. The Torah, the Tanakh, uh, even the Brit Kadashah gives us a visual aid. Um, uh, so that's uh, what I want to go to. So with the visual aid that the Most High has given us, we can find our way back to producing as the Most High wants us to produce as a nation. So if we could, uh, can I get one of my readers, uh, Yeremi, if you could start off with me uh, in the book of Tehillim, Tehillim chapter 19, which is commonly called Psalms, Chapter 19 and verse 7. A year me might, might be listening at work. Kanaka, I think there might be a year me I might be at work tonight. He can't read. Kanaka, give me 19, uh, uh, Tehillim 19, verse 7. Shalom, Moray. I'm here. Um, I'm free. Okay, okay. Read for me, dog. Tehillim chapter 19, verse 7. The law of Yahuwah is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. Okay, so this is heavy stuff to me. I, I don't know if y'all see how heavy this is. Before I go, I do want to open the floor. What's this verse saying to, we take about three or four quick comments, anyone that want to say, why well, I say this is heavy. What are you getting out of Tehillim chapter 19 and 7? The first few hands go up and people will give the floor to so we can make it through the uh make it through the night's uh study. So anyone um why you think I'm saying that so well it's heavy to me. I, I hope it's heavy to everybody else. But anyone want to say what they're getting out of Tehillim chapter 19, verse 7? Okay, uh Maury Kanaka, floor is yours. Shalom, shalom, my king. Uh, because the um most High declared that his Torah is our wisdom. And so, uh, first and foremost, those of us that lack wisdom when we read Torah, it, it teaches us to obey him, which is the uh, the first principal thing, and to walk in wisdom toward, uh, towards mankind as well. Are you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shashamar. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, that verse, it, it basically uh, just makes to me that Torah is simple. Um, you know, when you, especially when you read, like, let's say, a, a common chapter like Deuteronomy um, 28, you can read, you know, the blessings and the curses, you know, it's either you accept it or you don't, you know. It tells you what's going to happen to you if you obey the laws of the Most High, and it tells you what's going to happen if you do obey the laws. You know, there's no way around it. It's not much room for interpretation, you know. Are you... Hallelujah, hallelujah. Adon Yaqua, for yours, I can. Kantura Moray, Shalom Akim. To me, I, what, what I'm seeing here is 
<clears throat> that the Most High's uh, Torah is totally complete. There's nothing missing. There's nothing um, short. Everything in it is 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 perfect. It's it's all well thought out to the to the to the T. And that's what converts our soul. That's what that's what makes us Yisrael. Um, and and like you said, that you know the testimonies, what we read of of like you how you open, you know, we can see from our forefathers that did right and those that didn't do right what happened to them. Those testimonies are sure, you know, making wise the simple. So that that that's what I see that it's complete. It's totally complete. There's nothing missing in the law. If we want to be each Elohim, that law is completely perfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So everything that the brother said, I'm in agreement with. Uh, Maury cannot, yeah, I said by how being wise, but I like uh, also what Shashamar said, but I want to build right from what the Zakane just said. The law is complete. I mean, it's, it has everything we need. Everything we need to make us wise. And when you read some of the other writings, such as Sirach and things like that, it tells you the fear of Elohim is the beginning of being accepted of him. To keep his commandments, to fear him, is how you get wisdom by keeping his commandments. So if we want wisdom, then we have to have Torah because wisdom is already written therein. And it is complete. Like whatever we're faced with in life, if we go to doing it according to what he has already written per his instructions, it's in there. It's in there. Now, what I want to do is be able to bridge somewhat of a gap because, you know, we have a mixed platform. Uh, we have some that you do Torah only, some that go to the Brit Kaddishah. My goal is to be able to show the quotes in the Brit Kaddishah and how they have to come back to Torah to not. So we know that a lot of people in the church world commonly always uses the Book of Romans. They like to go there. But in the Book of Romans, it tells you that you must convert your soul and prove what is acceptable in the sight of the Most High. My question is, how will we prove what's acceptable in the sight of the Most High, except we have the wisdom of the Most High that was already written down to tell us what was acceptable? How do we convert our soul? That would have to be a question to me. How do I convert my nefesh, as it says in the Book of Romans? How do I prove what is good and acceptable, as it says in the Book of Romans? Because again, in the Book of Romans, it was Hebrews talking to other Hebrews as they was traveling through Gentile nations, trying to get Hebrews to return back to the Creator who then went off and been scattered abroad. So when they were, when they attend, be converted, you gotta be converted from these Gentile ways, these Gentile mannerisms, this Western mindset and turn back to a Yah mindset. So you gotta be converted. You gotta be changed back into the original. So again, when you shoot to Shuva or when you turn back, that is now going back to the point of origin, which is the creator. So to renew our mind, it tells us right here in Tehillim, the, Torah, the instructions of Yahuwah, is perfect converting. That word there for converting is going to give you the root word, shub, which is 87725, which is going to be a, another word used for return, to turn, to repent. So to convert means you have to turn back to being as the creator had instructed or planned for us from the very beginning. And his Torah, as Zakane just said, is perfect. It's complete. It just shows us how to transform back into righteousness from unrighteousness. So it says the Torah of Yah is perfect, converting or transforming the nefesh. It said the testimony of Yahuwah is sure. Listen, listen, listen to this. Making wise the simple. Making wise the simple. I just want to go here just for the sake of, just for us to have a little laugh tonight. So the word there for simple in Hebrew is petit. Sounds like, like petty to me. Petit, right? So the petty <laughs> or the simple-minded people, that if they have Torah, it makes even a simpleton. And when you look the definition up for petty, it's going to tell you simplicity. It's going to tell you simple. It's going to tell you foolish, seductible, a simple one. So a simpleton, as we covered in, the, uh, in, in, in some prior studies in the Dead Sea Scrolls in the community rule, it said a simpleton cannot hold a position in the house of Elohim. A simpleton cannot be entrusted with a duty because they're simple-minded. And then we have a script that we know a lot of brothers quote, oh, you simple one, oh, oh you simple, how long will you in love simplicity, right? So if we're simple-minded and we don't want to continue to be simple-minded, then we need the Torah because it said the testimonies of the Most High makes even the simple wise. So this class that we do weekly, 
all praise be to the most high for the platform for all the brothers that tune in this platform is supposed to be transforming us from being unrighteous to righteous from being simple-minded to wise from being ignorant to understanding from lacking information and ignorant to being informative on the things of the creator on how to love your wife how to love and take care of your children but most importantly how to serve the creator and what he expects from one that carries the title yisrael yasha allah yashra all whichever dialect one uses and for those that want to say i'm a hebrew or i'm one of god's chosen people if we make that boast understand what that really means we're supposed to be a servant of Elohim. And that's what the Torah does. It makes us wise in how we walk this thing out. But again, we must walk something out. And so why I say that that's so heavy is because our mindset has been conformed. Because when you go back to Romans, it say, be not conformed to the world. Do not take on the form or the fashion of the world. So what we have to understand is still, even us in this walk, some of our ways are still worldly. And as we go to the Torah, it starts making us wise. And we keep saying, I got to cut even more away. This is still a little churchy. This is still a little old school from what we was taught by our oppressors. This still is not actually the word of Elohim. I'm going to hold this portion, but this portion I have to let go because this is not what Elohim commands. So the Torah makes us wise. The Torah makes us righteous if we submit to it and we obey it. All right. So we're going to drop that. My reason for going here is. The Torah gives us the information. And as I said, it gives us a visual, right? So if we could, Jeremy, I'll jump to uh, the book of uh, Devarim, chapter one. Devarim, chapter one, which is Deuteronomy, for those that may be a little newer. Deuteronomy, uh, Devarim, uh, chapter one. And let's start at around about, uh, start at by, um, about verse 10. So we're going to Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter one, Jeremy, and start about verse 10. Deuteronomy 1, verse 10. Yahuwah, your Elohim, has multiplied you, and behold, ye are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Yahuwah, your Elohim of your fathers, make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you as he has promised you. How can I myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribe and I will make them rulers over you. Okay, so pause here. So it says that the Most High is gonna multiply this nation. And this, this nation is now multiplied even more since we've been out of Mishraim at Moshe time. But what has happened to the nation even now today? From Mishraim to Moshe time coming out of Mishraim, they will multiply because remember about those who went in by the number of 70 that went in with Yaakov when they first went in, when now Israel is coming out, they're coming out much more than what they went in. So now what about today? from the time of Moshe to now, has the nation of Israel not grown even more? Is there not more little Israelite babies that have been born to the point where we are some Israelites now that are here with many more problems, <laughs> much more strife, a whole lot more confusion than what they had back then, but we still have what they had back then also, Torah. Torah. So what he told Moses was, look, Moses said, look, I can't bear you by myself alone. I can't do this by myself. So already this is now putting a, a hole in it. I mean, no offense to anyone. I don't know how new some brothers may be. I see new names. But in the church sometime, the pastor, the bishop, the apostle, and all these titles we give ourselves, man, it's all about them. It's never about any man. It's all about the most high. And it takes many men to lead a nation back to the most high. Not any men, many men to bring a nation back to the most high. Not any men, but many men, many righteous men, but more so specifically, it says, 
How can I by myself alone bear your cumbrance and your burden and your strife? Take you wise men and understand it and known among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. Take you wise men. So how do one become wise? Where do we start at? We started in the book of Tehillim, chapter 19 and seven. It said that his Torah is perfect. The testimonies of Yahuwah makes wise the simple. A simpleton, any man cannot lead people back to the most high if they're simpletons. It takes wise, humble, righteous men that understands their duty is to the creator and not into themselves to lead people back to the creator by what does the word of the most high say? So I can't get every scripture tonight. So in the book of you, because the call of Ezekiel, it said that a priest, as well as the Torah says, a priest is supposed to make a difference between clean and unclean, righteousness and unrighteousness. They're supposed to show you or us what we're doing wrong and how it is to be done right in the sight of our creator. But if we don't have Torah, how can we lead anyone back to the most high? What many wrong men have done is led people away from the most high, but we are not trying to return to the creator. So in returning to him, we have to have the wisdom of the creator that's already written, and we have to submit it to his Torah, and we must lead people by way of Torah. But we can't do it by ourselves, brothers. No one man can do this. Moshe, who had the most high speaking directly to him, who said, I'm going to make you a Elohim to the people, still said, I can't do this by myself. <laughs> I need help. And it says, so, uh, so now it says, take you wise men and understand it and known among your tribes, and I will make them rulers over you. The most high told Moshe who to select. But the Most High said he would do what? He would make them rulers over you. But what type man to pick? Why? So what would Moshe have to understand or know about these men? I would have to know what they understand according to Torah. I would have to know what they know of the Most High before I even select them to put them in position. This is not even about age at this time. And one thing that I even noticed in the walk, there's things that we all have to learn to do. We have to all learn to humble ourselves and to denounce ourselves and to understand that when we come from one walk to this walk, we got to not return as a little babe. I don't care what position you held in any other institute you've ever been in. I don't care what your level of understanding was or what your title was in church. When you come to the true understanding of the most high, we all have to strip ourselves of all we learn and be retaught. It said, when one desires to be a teacher, he needs to be what? Taught again. We have to have our heart circumcised. And circumcision, or the word circumcised in Hebrew, is going to be mul. That's to cut away. So again, when the Mashiach and the Brit Kadashah spoke in parables, he spoke in parables of physical things for us to be able to visualize so we know how to carry it out spiritually. So when they give this covenant of circumcision was given to Abraham to circumcise the foreskin of a man's flesh was to do what? To move was to cut away foreskin. That is a visual, physical that you can see. Something had to be cut away and tossed away. That can't come with you to be under covenant. You have to leave that out to come under covenant. So now when it says in Ezekiel as well about those who allow those uncircumcised in flesh and heart to come into my sanctuary, how do you circumcise your heart? The same way you circumcise your flesh. There is mess that we got when we was conformed to the world, that we have to cut away. No matter how good it sounds, no matter how good it felt, if it does not line up with the word of Elohim, we have to cut it away. It has to move. We have to be circumcised. And we must yield to the wisdom of his rules, regulations, his law, statute, his commandments. So when doing so, we must cut these things away. So for us to now be in a position of leadership, we have to first go to the Torah ourselves to find out, am I living according to how the creator wants me to live? Am I one that can even be considered a servant leader of the most highest people? It's saying Moses had to get wise men. So there's a lot of people that sound wise with worldly advice, 
and worldly examples a lot of times. And some of those proverbs and worldly things that they say are some wise sayings. I'm not saying they're not. But if they do not line up with the word of Elohim, no matter how wise they are, that's not wisdom according to the Most High. So we must make sure we have the wisdom of Elohim and know this Torah. That's why King Dawid, Dawood, whichever dialect you use, said, I will meditate on your Torah daily. Daily. And he also knew the sin that he had, and he begged the Most High, Most High, and please do not take your Ruach HaKodesh from me. The Ruach did not originate in Brick Kadashah. I believe in Brick Kadashah, so don't anyone take offense to it. What I'm saying is we as servants of Elohim, as East Elohim, we got to know this word front and backwards so that we do not still teach a Christian-based doctrine by understanding that King David already understood he was given the Ruach. When you read about the kings from the very first king, Shaul was given the Ruach, but the Ruach departed from him when he did not walk in obedience and he did not do things according to the instructions of the creator. The term anointed one did not originate with what we call in the Brit Kadasha, the Mashiach, the term Mashach or anointed, all kings were anointed ones before the people. So what, where am I going with that? So the point is this, there are terms that we must understand from a Torah perspective so that when we get to the Brit Kadasha, we understand the proper application of what it is we're saying or we're believing so we would know how to lead our people back to the true creator. So King David, Dawid of Dawood said, do not take your Ruach HaKodesh from me. So the Ruach already existed, but how can it be taken from you or how can you lack it? If you're not walking in the wisdom of the Most High or if you're walking in sin and you're walking in disobedience to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. Reading on. So Moses had to take wise men and understanding. So in Proverbs said, with all that getting, get understanding. To be able to quote Torah and not understand Torah does not make us fit to try to lead the most high people back. Now, I understand we don't fully understand all of it ourselves, but there are certain things we should understand. And if you don't understand it, but you can just read it, you really can't lead anyone else because you're going to be doing it in error. So it says, and of understanding, wise men and understanding and known among your tribes known among your tribes. It's easy for the people to respect someone that has already been proven to them as a righteous person, as a loving elder in the community, as a loving leader in the community, one that treats his wife well, one that tries to protect the nation. Because remember, even though Saul had David on the run, when it was time when Saul was not killed and when there was some of them still didn't want to turn the whole kingdom back over to David, there were those that came and said, look, we know you was the King David. You were the anointed of the Most High. You were, the, you were our savior. You were our shepherd. You were the one that saved us. The people recognized that while David wasn't even thinking to be a king, was just a submissive subject of Saul, but he was the one going out killing people. And even when Saul was chasing him, instead of taking care of the kingdom, he's around his jealous behind trying to come kill David. David was still away, running from Saul, killing Philistines, taking care of Israel. And then David also gave justice to people and was still trying to get food and, and, and spoils of war to everybody. Even when the brother said, no, nah, they ain't come to fight with us so they don't get nothing but their wives and children back. David said, nah, that ain't how this work. Every man gets a part of the spoils of this war that we took back from these Philistines, every man. So when a person knows the heart of King David before he was actually the full-fledged king, it was easy for the rest of Israel to be like, yes, we need to submit to David. We know he was the anointed of the Most High. Why? Because we know him. We know him when he had to run away from Saul. We know he ain't really do nothing wrong, but we were subject to Saul. Saul was the king. He told us to hunt him down. But in, in, in our heart, we know David was a good dude. That's the, what we need to be working on right now, Mishmaka. This call is so that we can work on our character, our conduct, and our behavior so that the people that we are among can know us so that our elders can know us and say, I support this Ark. I support this young brother here because I've watched his growth. I've watched his humility. I've watched his studies. I've watched how he has now surpassed many that was in it before him 
not for bragging, right? Just from me I'm observing that as it says in the book of Tehillim also, Torah should make you wiser than your teachers. And I'm one of them teachers that say, I, I can't go against what Torah said. That's what it says. But as I said, and I'll connect it many times before, it should make you wiser than your teacher if your teacher ain't still studying like he's supposed to. But if it's supposed to make you wiser than your teacher, I'm still trying to chase my teacher so I can become wiser than my teacher. And anyone that I teach is supposed to be still trying to chase me to be wiser than me because Torah said it's possible. But what I am saying is, but any teacher only should be making it almost impossible for you to fulfill that because they're still trying to get wiser than the person who taught them. So it's being passed down from generation to generation, a study ethic of Torah returning to the most high and showing that zeal and that love for the creator. We're supposed to inspire one another to want to be better. And so an elder is supposed to be able to see, like I tell you, brothers, like Shah Shamar, you hear his comments that he makes. There's sometimes we're teaching just on an overall survey when we have all the connects, not just a men's study. And you can hear by the way people respond to what you teach, who really understands and gets it, and who was excited by it, but don't fully understand it, by the comments that are made by people like Yeremia and a lot, like a lot of you younger brothers make on here. And then we all be pulling these precepts. I'm like, man, this brother been studying. Like when they pulling a the precept and you teaching your moray, oh, can I read the rest of this right here? Cause this, man, you know them brothers been studying because they know where to go next or the Ruach is now leading them like, oh man, what more are you talking about? This right here goes with that. Because again, it goes back to this. I can't do it by myself. If the word of Elohim is going to come forth to the people and one of the young ox now has a precept that lines up what I'm saying, it's going to give it that extra oomph when I'm teaching because we got some more Torah to go with a comment that I made. And I may say, well, I'm just quoting. And then I'll be like, Maury, I already got the scripture right here. Read it up. Because the words of the Torah is more important than my words. So when you start to see brothers just hearing your thoughts and they already got the scriptures locked and loaded, you know, them brothers start to be known. This ain't the brother just somewhere just living in wickedness all the time. This is the brothers that have been seeking Elohim. When I'm on with Zerat and, 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 and Adon uh, Benaiah doing, uh, doing the day services that they have, I hear Ken and Yah and all the scriptures he pulled. Want me to read that? Want me to read that? Let me get this. That brother always pulls a scripture. That's how we start to know one another. This call, this brotherhood meeting, that's what it's for also. The more time we spend with each other, we start to know one another. We start to get familiar with one another and we start to know who's who amongst us. And so then the oneness starts to come and the vision starts to come clear and we can now walk the vision out together. So my whole reason for doing this class is because I'm one that understands that the next generation that's under me, I have elders on here that's older than me and I'm elder to some of you and you're gonna be elder to someone else but we're supposed to be passing down so this thing can continue on, but it gets stronger and stronger because the next generation should be gleaning so much from what we're passing down that they can pick it up and they can continue to esteem the name of the creator. But back to the main point, take you wise men and understanding and known among your tribes and I will make them rulers over you. 14, Adon, pick up for me 14, Yermia. Verse 14, and ye answered me and said, the thing which thou hast spoken is good for us to do. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time saying, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is Allahim's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I commanded you at the time, at that time, all the things which ye should do. Okay, told I told I don't. So now it says that he took the chiefs 
the chief of the Roche, the heads, the first of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you. Then he also made Sar a captains. He made Shatar or officers. He made all these different positions to now these, these heads of the tribes. Now you got these captains of these Sar. So when you hear someone with the name Sar in front of their name, that is a, 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 a authoritative role. Shatar or Shotel, whichever dialect one may utilize as officers. And they're giving people responsibilities and duties. But before anyone can do a responsibility of a duty, they had to be known. They had to have some wisdom. They had to know Torah. Why? Because the way people judge today, oh man, I like, I like, uh, I like Ak Dawood. So, you know, that's my man right there. I'm with him every day. And I can't see no wrong in the brother. Uh, but man, uh, Uzel, and uh, and this is just an example, and, and Kenaya, uh, Kenya, and Aharon seen Dawood do it. So what you say now, Maury Samad? Oh, no, no, it's still the other brother's fault, though. La'a, lo, whichever Hebrew dialect. No, because now it said we appoint these men, but they have to have a certain character about themselves. They have to have a certain honor code about themselves. That honor code is written down already. Uh, each Elohim must understand we on duty for the most high. And it says, so we're going to give them uh, heads for their tribes, a Rosh? which are going to be the chiefs. We're going to give them SAR, or captains. We're going to give them officers. And based upon their ability, based upon their rank and structure, here's what they're responsible for. This is how many they're responsible for. Because you can't get all these people by yourself, Moshe. You can't do this by yourself. So Yachanan got 50 over here. In the part of VA where he's at, Yachanan, make sure the sheep good up there, don't. Zakane Eliyahu has a hundred in California. Saw a prince down in Georgia has 500. Make sure they good. But now his 500, he's going to break it down. I'm responsible for 500, but I'm going to break it down and I'm going to give uh, uh, this arc 100. I'm going to give this arc 50. I'm going to give this arc 100. I'm going to give this arc 50. So he's done split up his responsibility. But he's still responsible for all 500, but he appointed people also to help him with the 500 he was responsible for. To make sure we do not omit or forget any sheep. Now let me go back to a brick Kadashah principle. So jumping back to the brick Kadashah for a moment, when you had those that was complaining about the food and getting fed a plate and doing this and the disciples didn't get us to me. And sometimes this is a word we have to understand, brother, I'm gonna get back to the main point. When people like understanding of the word, they may not understand certain things. Sometimes it's not, and, and they're gonna take it a certain, oh, they think they something because they got a title. No, it's not always about thinking you something because you got a title. Sometimes a title has a duty. And if my duty is to study to around and bring it forward, I don't need to be fixing no plates. I will fix a plate. I will serve because I'm a servant first. But if we got 200 brothers and I got to prepare to be on time to present the lesson that the Most High has given me by way of his Ruach to the whole congregation for a feast day? Do I need to be fixing a plate? That's why in the brick kind of shot of Talmudim said, look, we got all these other disciples out here. We're the 12. We are the apostles. Not that we, because we also know that it also said about them what? The greatest you should be is among us the least. So we don't have a problem with serving because that's what they did first. They went through being servants. But now that we come forth bringing this word, do you see all these other arguments out here? Man, make some of them deacons. Make some of them saw, shotel. Make some of them officers and captains. Give them some duties and responsibilities to make sure the sheep is fed and properly protected. Hush that sheep up from over there from complaining about they ain't come around and they ain't give me a plate. Because out of Yakadon 50, he got to make sure the 50 people came with him, got a plate. Zakane Eliyahu got to make sure that the 100 came with him is fed and is safe. Oh, well, uh, the priest ain't come over to my table personally and give me a plate, and some of us didn't eat. That's because one man can't do it all. This responsibility has to be divided up and divvied up. But it has to be divvied up to righteous each Elohim that have been trained up in the mindset of the Most High. So now let me go back to the, to the script. It says, and I charge 
your judges at that time saying, hear the causes between your brethren and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that's with him. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment. So now these men also at this particular time were to be able to judge the people. The strife and the burdens that Moses was always dealing with, they were now supposed to be able to be the ones that hold counsel. So sometimes there may be a council hell. I may not be present. The Zakane or the Zakane may not be present. It may be some of you younger ox. What's the issue? The issue is someone stole the basketball. Oh, really? Okay, so really, I can give him the $10 and just get another ball. It can just be done. But that's not how the most I want done. He wants justice done. So I'm not about to do a count on basketball. I say that's beneath me, just saying that the other ox need to learn how to judge so they can start off with a small matter. We can get three young ox that's trained up in Torah and they should be able to make righteous judgment on who stole the basketball or not, or who owes who a basketball back. But if it comes to some major marital issues or some, some real heavy stuff, hey, elders, I have to turn this over to you. Uh, yes, I know I'm over, I'm, I'm officer over these, but they have a matter that's above me. So who do you, do I direct it? Are you going to handle this council or now you're going to give it to one of the mores like Moray Benaya, or are you going to give it to Moray Dawood or are you going to give it to the Zakanin? Are you going to give it to Saw? How do, how do I proceed? There also has to be an accountability and an understanding of being able to say, I'm not qualified. I might mess it, I might make the matter worse. So I need to give this situation over to someone that's qualified. So these men were trained and they understood that I deal with smaller matters and some of these smaller matters don't even have to burden the priest. We can deal with this because we're responsible for this group right here. But now if the matter is too big, then we bring it up to Moses. We bring it up to the heads, to the Rosh. But he says, and you shall judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. Now, here's the key and the heavy part. Ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is Elohim's. My brothers, like I always say, well, I'm in my right ruach. I may be one of what y'all consider a chief moray over other mores or however you consider you may see me. That is just a title that men put on things for us understanding or ranking structure. That's all that is. But I'm a man also. If I'm in judgment because I have to sit under counsel before elders and brothers and judges, and I'm the one that is wrong, whether you are a direct member of my mishpaka or you want to come to this brother study, and I've counseled you and I've done something great for you in your life. I helped you with something. I don't care about none of that. If I am wrong, you look me in my face as a man and you tell me I'm wrong. Because you are accountable to Elohim for this. There are brothers that have run away to sheep because leadership will not rebuke leadership. There's all type of negative things that have happened. The reason why people are leaving the walk is because they feel like they don't get a fair trial with leadership. They know somebody in leadership has wronged somebody. And leadership don't handle like the word tells it to. We show favoritism. And I'm telling you, well, I'm in my right ruach, and I pray that I'm always in the right ruach. If I am in error, you tell me if we're in a council and we sit before the judges. You have to be a righteous witness. You have to be a righteous judge. That's Torah. And one of the fears that brothers have, and I hope they erase that fear today, sometimes we fear losing a relationship with a brother because the brother will be mad at me for telling the truth. <laughs> You can let some Mark Tazawai hate you for the rest of your life. I would rather you have a relationship with the Most High than a relationship with me. And you should definitely value your relationship with the Most High more than you value your relationship with me. But I hope that anytime any of you tell me anything, first of all, I hope I ain't on the wrong side of the spectrum where y'all got to tell me I'm in error. But if I am, I hope that the Most High humbles me enough to say, man, I thank you, Yakanon. I thank you, all, because I just didn't see it. I was so angry. I didn't see my fault. I didn't see my mistake. But if Yok said it, Yok said it, 
Yohanan said it, and Yaquam said it, man, Samark, I need to examine myself. Like, <sighs> man, it's hard to accept that I was wrong. Hold on, I'll hit one more arc up just to get his opinion. Ben and I, what'd you say? Yeah, Moray, from what I heard, you was out of order. I, I don't say that. What said ye? Moray, <laughs> you was out of order. I, at that point, we, I got to humble myself and say, most I thank you for giving me righteous brothers to help keep me on in your will so that you do not take your Ruach Hagodesh from me. But if I get mad with you and if I don't want to have a relationship with you, so be it. But y'all be each Elohim. And I'm using me as an example, but I'm using that example for any brother. Brothers have allowed their relationship with brothers caused them to go against the Torah of the Most High. And this is the very thing that I was like, can you lie to you who tries to warn us about on a regular? We have to be very careful with how we move. You get the wrong people in the wrong positions in the wrong place and they pull a coup. That's written in scriptures also. There was some priests that tried to pull a coup on Moses. Try to overthrow him with their wicked selves. So as Zakan Yelagu always says, we have to be very careful with how we move to make sure we're moving in the will of the Most High when we move. But the Most High's word has given us a format or a blueprint of how to move. Look for the wise men. Look for those you see trying to keep Torah in your house. Look for the men you see humbling themselves when they're in error. Men that you did not even know was in error, they come and confess their fault to you. Try to rule out by the rule Try to rule out by Torah. So it says, ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. Ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is Elohim's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. So you know everybody now say only God can judge me. That's still, that's a true statement. <laughs> that's a true statement. But he gives us what? Laws, statutes, commandments, and what? And judgments. So if we come out of the word of Elohim and a judgment is pronounced because of your behavior and we execute or we follow what Torah says is supposed to be followed, the judgment is Elohim's. Can't no man judge me. You're right. <laughs> You're right about that too. Can't no man judge you. But two or three can. <laughs> two or three can. Go to the book of Deborah and Deuteronomy. See, this is the wisdom we have to have. One man can't judge you. You can't bring one man to judge one man with no witnesses present or without there being witnesses. Two or three. But if two or three come together in righteousness, according to Torah, then yes, Elohim did judge you. So you better humble yourself and stop with no man can judge me. Or as some brothers have said about us, like y'all little kangaroo council, because they didn't respect the council that came forth from elders and their peers at the time that came from the word. Then take that up with Elohim. But it tells us how to come. No respect to persons, two or three witnesses, and we let a matter be established. That's what's needed in the age that we're in, because right now, Israel, we need to come together. Maury Dawu was teaching on this past uh, 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 week, well, just this week, night before last, on can two walk together except to be agreed. We have to start walking together, and this Torah helps us start walking together. It's not going to be easy to walk together but it should be easy to walk together. I'm gonna say it again. It's not gonna be easy to walk together, but it should be easy to walk together. Once we learn to conquer our flesh, our ego and our pride and submit to the words of Elohim, it starts to get easy. And if we're following the script, we're supposed to be able to restore and revive our culture our relationship with our creator. But the wisdom has to come from the word of the creator. And that's why in the Greek Kadashah, in the book of Romans that I quoted the other night, it says the law or the Torah is holy, just, and tobe. 
The Torah is holy. So we're going to have a Ruach HaKodesh. We have to have the Torah that it shows us what holiness is. It shows us what set apartness is. And is it what it looked like and what it does not look like so that we can yada or discern between good and evil? I'm going to drop that. So my brothers, the, again, part of the reason for this class is to be raising up the other Akin, to be establishing a strong, righteous brotherhood, Shlika, to establish a strong, Yah-fearing brotherhood that's rooted on Torah, that's led by the Ruach of the Most High Yah, that follows the example of our Mashiach, who walked the Torah out to show us how it was done. He, without sin, cast the first stone. He ain't saying that they sins was all right to do when you get to the brick Kaddashah, for those that might misunderstand that. He didn't say what, what, what the woman did was right. But according to the Torah, it says if she was in, committed adultery, where the man at? The woman and the man should have been brought. Oh, but the brother can slide, but we want to put the, we want the woman stone because she cheated on her husband. With an order for, for Hebrews, we understand how for a woman to cheat on her husband, she actually got to be sleeping with a man as what? Not her husband. So where was that dude at? Don't be a respect to persons in judgment. So we're trying to build a Yah-fearing righteous brotherhood so we can establish some righteous Rosh or chiefs some righteous sar or captains, some righteous shatar, shatar or officers, some righteous ish Elohim so that they can now be what? Judges to be able to judge small matters and pass the larger matters on to others and to make sure that our nation is being taken care of and looked after. Part of our lesson has been what? Woe unto the shepherds. And as we told here, a shepherd start with you being your own shepherd. Your, make sure you do what you're supposed to do first. You got to get it first. Then you got to make sure you establish it in your house first. So you can get your practice of being a shepherd in your house first. That way, when the most high and I put other sheep under you, you know how to provide, you know how to protect, you know how to lead them to righteousness. That's what these classes have been leading us to. A renewing of the Ruach so we can be converted in our nefesh, in our soul. Doing it according to the will of the Most High Elohim. That's why we're having these studies, so that we can establish this in righteousness, grounded on the principles that the Most High has written. And there's one law, there's one Torah, one Torah. There's not two, three, or four, five, there's one Torah. So if we are all submitting to the writers of Torah and being led by the Ruach, even with some of the differences, as the Sar said uh, uh, a week before last, or maybe last week when I first met him on call, praise be to the most high that I met him. And he said, listen, brothers, my belief is slightly different than y'all's, but y'all still my brothers. I hear the love that y'all have for one another. I hear the respect that y'all have for one for another. I hear y'all just trying to be sincere about this walk with each other and hold each other accountable. That's what I hear, because there's one Torah. And when you have that one Torah, our relationship can get rooted there first. And as we start to water that relationship, then watch the Ruach work. And then we start seeing how many fruit will sprout and how relationship will grow closer and closer and tighter and tighter and how the Most High lead us all to where we need to be in the proper time and the proper season, if it's his will. So with that being said, I want to establish that first. Now I want to go get some Brit Kadasha real quick. And this is going to be my last place. So before I go to Brick Kata Shah, I'm only going to quote something from the Torah. And I'm going to quote when Moshe, which I've already quoted, was establishing the temple and the community. Well, the Mishkan, I should say, because it wasn't the actual uh, uh, the house like what uh, uh, Shalomo built. But anything that was needed for the service of Elohim, for the people and things like that, of course, they had them bringing the stuff to Moshe. Moshe told the people what was needed. The people started bringing it into Moshe. When it got to be too much, Moshe said, ho, 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 don't bring any more. Also, the Most High led to Moshe those that had the skill of carpentry or builders or those that can fashion things together, that had the wisdom to do those things. So even amongst us, there are going to be certain gifts 
and talents that we have that's supposed to be for the body of Israel. Just like uh, uh, Adon Zedat was letting us know, he's tired of seeing our people have to wear wicked clothing line. So he's trying to get a righteous clothing line started to push out so that the younger generation can be at least wearing righteous clothing that's been prayed over by a believer that hopefully that when they put these clothes on, it, it, it won't have the negative that's associated with all this negative stuff that's been sacrificed to some idols and they right here wearing all these idol clothing. That's a help to the community. Giving them a different mindset, a different perspective, giving them righteousness to put on for the brothers to make garbs and things. They're helping us return to our ancient roots. They're making us look royal in the apparel for the brothers to make the commandments to go. It says we should have in the Devarim itself, not the yeah, Devarim itself, in the Shema. It said you should write them on the doorposts. So when you got people like Maura, Ethan, and, 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 and Adon, uh, uh, Lasimba, and, and uh, 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 should I say Zakain Lasimba, and you got Adon, uh, Abadal, and all these carpenter type brothers, they can make us commandment plaques to mount on houses so we can fulfill the commandments. Go buy you a plaque in store. You supporting the brother's business and the brother's also supporting your household and supporting you keeping Torah because you're able to put the commands on the doorposts of your house. We're starting to bring the vision alive. Take them angels off your wall. Take them false images off your wall and put up what the most I told us to put up. But that's when we have a nation that's coming together and we now start to try to walk together and we have to know who, who has what gifts so we can bring all these things to Israel so that Israel can return to being the ancient nation and the nation of priests we're supposed to be. So that's going to be another tour out because for the sake of time, I want to open the floor and give everybody a chance to speak. But I just want to jump to the brick kind of shot for a quick moment. Uh, 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 Yemi, are you still with me? Uh, let's jump to uh, Matiahu, chapter 25, Adon. Uh, you said 25? Yeah, 25. And I want to jump in and start at one. We got a good bit of reading to do in 25, but just read it read it with a little expedient because we all got learned man on here, so we ain't got to do the slow read. Just read through, and then I'm going to come to it after you read. So start at 25 and read, 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 read on. All right. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other version saying, Master, Master, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his master's money. 
After a long time, the master of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so he that had received five talents came and bought other five talents, saying, Master, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His master said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. He said that he also that had received two talents came and said, Master, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His master said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Master, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His master answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed, not and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with ursery. Yeah, I mean, yeah, hold it for a second, Adon. I want you to hold those last two verses again when I read it, so you come at those last two verses, but let me now kind of bring to my closing point. So we know we hear a lot of people use the parable, parable of the virgin. So I'm gonna uh, 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 rather, rather uh, we look at a virgin represents purity, right? So it's one that has not been touched by man from the understanding of what we understand the virgin is. So it's representing a place of purity. So it is saying these 10, all of them were pure, right? So we Israelites and we all can be keeping Torah, right? We all can be trying to be righteous, right? But then there is still something that we know is going to happen is going to come and we should be preparing for it so those 10 pure individuals out of the 10 pure five of them had wisdom they were all pure but five of them had wisdom and five of them were foolish pure so the wise ones they went to make sure they got all for their lamp, because unlike it may be today in, in, in Israel, when they had weddings, according to if you research some of the old customs, sometimes they actually did wedding ceremonies in the night. And it was not street light, so we're gonna have to travel to get somewhere, we're gonna need to have some light. So they went and they made sure they got extra oil to make sure we have enough oil to make this journey or to be ready whenever, for whatever. We won't be left in the dark. So they got their all together. And the five foolish did not prepare. They set on faith. They set on the boast that we use so often. I'm an Israelite. I'm one of God's chosen people. Well, Cain, Cain, Con, Con. But faith without works is dead being alone. We better be getting out all ready. We better be putting this Torah in us and seeing and asking the Most High by prayer and fasting, Most High, okay, I understand it in the literal sense of don't do this or do that, but now how am I supposed to walk this out in my life? How do I do this for me and my family? For Israel today, what does it look like for me? I see that Abraham had to leave from where his father's house was at and go build his own house. I see Israel had to leave Mitzrayim. They had to go out into the wilderness. They had to wait for the manna to come down. Then you scattered them to different lands, but they went into the land after you got them there and they had to build up. I see these things, how it happened for them. So do I still have a church mindset waiting for the father to do everything for me who has already done everything for me? From the very beginning, it said he created the heaven and the earth, seeing all that in them is. 
And he created a day of rest. And then he introduced man, right? He created them on the sixth day before they had to do any work and brought them right in right before the day of rest and told them be fruitful and multiply because the day I'm having a relationship with y'all on your rest day. Now y'all work, you go and you work. The very first commandment to man was what? Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. A lot of us are pure. We're returning to, and not totally pure. Y'all understand what I'm saying? We're trying to be righteous as we can. We're trying to do, we're returning to that state. We're trying to be uh, renewed in our mind. We're trying to be converted. We're doing that. But are we multiplying anything? Are we working? Noah had faith in the creator but he had to build that ark. And he kept telling the people, come help me build this ark. And when the people were not coming to help him build that ark, he and his family built that ark. And when that flood came, others could not get on that ark because they did not participate in the work. I'm gonna share something that I share with, with, with Zakain. When I'm in moray mode for the Knesset, I understand there's different levels of understanding. And I am a shepherd. I'm a moray, which means I'm a teacher. So I'm trying to teach and help the people understand. The reason why our lessons be so long sometimes is because we try to give them visuals to give them a picture to see so they can learn how to embrace this thing and start to walk it out. And most people say how patient and how loving and kind I am. Hallelujah. That's not a front. That's who I am. When we're talking about Hebrew community, Mishpaka, We're talking about life or death based upon how we live. We, when we talk about having some Jonas that ain't did what the most I told them to do, coming in the community, bringing damnation on the community, I'm a different individual. I would give you the shirt off my back if you need it. But when it comes to us establishing the community and building the ark, and you don't want to put forth no brick. You don't want to put forth no labor. You don't want to give no help in hand. You don't want to bring your offerings as they did back in the wilderness with Moses. When that famine hits, we're responsible for the sheep that's with us. We're responsible for the, the wise that got their oil. And all those that's by the wayside that heard the word, Love being part of the fellowships, but because they lack understanding, they walk the way. Don't come running when tribulation hit. See, that's the side they don't understand. So I'm saying this to men that I'm trying to teach. I don't teach it this way to the sheep because they got to get grown up. You got to give them milk first. But to each Elohim, we got to be doing the best we can to get our family, friends, and loved ones on board. So that when it's really time to get on board, we have done, what are we, who are we protecting if we have no place to lead the sheep to? We have no provisions for the sheep or even for ourselves. We ain't multiplied nothing. What good are we? We ain't built no ark. Not literally an ark, but you know what we need right now? We see what's going on with this pan pandemic. We heard what the SAR said to us last week. If you own these jobs, you got to have some. Don't let that job just have your life for that job. You save that money. You have a plan and you build something. Y'all come together and you put it together and you build something. You work for the money and you build something. You create something. That's what they did. And when you read Torah, you see our forefather Abraham ain't want handouts. He brought the cave. You ain't never going to sit right here and say, y'all gave us nothing. That's Israel. Too many times, Israel, we want handouts. But if you look at the DNA of our forefathers, they weren't the type that wanted handouts. They paid their way. Nah, nah, I don't want them handouts. We got to start being them type of people that always got our hand out. And we got to start handing out to our people. We don't need handouts from everybody else because we're starting to follow what Torah says and we should be building and establishing and strengthening our nation and strengthening our people. And so when they come with their hands out, we can put something in their hands ourselves and I always have to send them to someone else to give them. So I'm saying I'll be a little different in the community because there's going to be some rules. That nonsense that you do in your personal life, in your personal house, that you hiding, 
that's another reason why some brothers say they want to do community. But what I find out over the years is really they don't want to because they don't really want you to know fully who they are. Because I'm going to tell you, community will expose who we are to each other. But back to the main focal point. So you see here, so, so now for the sheep to think that, man, Samak sound a little too hardcore, like he, he ain't going to help nobody. When it said the bridegroom came, the ones that ain't going to get no oil, they asked the other ones for oil, and you know what they told them? Now, y'all go to the market. We told y'all we was going to get it to stock up, to stock up. Brothers, I put a message out in the group messenger. I'm going to say this to you all now so y'all can get your houses ready to the best of your ability until we get further advanced in the things that we need to be doing as a nation. Food shortage is on the horizon again. It never really left nowhere. Don't let these people be rocking you back to sleep, giving you all this money, and money is not going to save us when there's no food. Be stocking your house up on dry goods. Beans, rice, canned goods, weapons for safety and protection. Don't burn up all your ammo just target practicing because it will at some point run out, but still make sure you know how to use them. Be safe and get your little practice in. Be training. Be preparing. Get you a water supply. Try to find some water purification. Have your bags ready to go in case you got to leave and go fast. Have you your bags for every member of your family. Have your bags ready. Your bug out bags. That's in individual homes. But on a larger scale, when we grab them bug out bags, now my question is, where are we going? <laughs> where are we going? So hopefully, we will start now multiplying even more and we will start creating this place or places depending on where you're traveling from you might have to stop the goshen you might not be able to make it to us from where you're traveling from you might have to make it over here to, to the kodash land i'm just throwing titles out here where you're traveling from there may be different as, as, it, as, as it says, cities of refuge that they had back in times past, if one person couldn't make it to a certain city, they had to make it to the closest city of refuge. So we need to be establishing, not for the, just the sake of someone that might be falsely accused or they had to run for safety. We need to be establishing a city of refuge for running from the tribulation. But these cities of refuge will all be governed by Torah. And it's not that we don't love your family. And I know some of the concerns that some people have with trying to bring community. Well, what about my family? I get that. I got family too. What about my family? My family that will submit to the rules that we have, whether they believe fully or not, hey. But they will be known, just like it was said when that little, uh, I said the Israelite is woman's son blasphemy in the name of the Messiah. You better warn them up front. When you come in this community, we don't play no blasphemy in the name of the Most High. Don't come up in here with all that. That, that, that false doctrine and that idolatry, all that mess got to go. You, if you want to be safe, it's time for you to learn who the most high is. Don't, you're going to sneak up in here with no swine, no crabs and all this. Oh, I'm just feeding for some crabs. So you're going to sneak off and get some crabs? You get put up out of the community. You can't, and I know we love our family. That's why we got to be trying to reach them now to get them converted. Because the reality of it is, you can't let them bring uncleanliness into any community that's set apart to the creator. But if they do come, they need to be vetted and they need to be explained that from this point, you got to denounce your mess because I will not be able to defend you when my brothers get a hold to you and you're brought before the Rosh of the community. And you're brought before the judges of the community and we have covered in our Torah portions for each Elohim that you can't be a respected person's in judgment. Did your brother who did not know the truth do this? Yes, he did. You know the judgment of that smock. He has to be put, hey, it is what it is. I told him before he came. These are all type of things we have to put in place and position. But again, if we're not doing anything, where, where are they going to run to? If we have nothing to give, what are we going to give them out? We got to start walking together to produce something, Mishmaka. Now, give me the last portion in just one moment. So now it says the kingdom of Shemaim is also like, there's a good master that left his house and he left some talents to his servants. One five, one two, and one one. And those servants actually produced, two of them, produced more with the talent or with the monies that they was left. 
they went out and they brought stuff. They made it produce more commerce. They made it work for them and they created more. And when it can't, so read those last two verses for me again, the dome that I told you to hold, and I'm gonna get ready to close. And I'm gonna open the floor to everybody else. Read. His master answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Why? Why was he wicked? Because he wasn't keeping the commandments. Because <laughs> he wasn't keeping Torah. You know how Israel, oh, I keep the commandments. I ain't wicked. I keep the commandments. He called him wicked because he ain't produced nothing. Read on the dome. Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not. You yourself then, said, you know how I'll go reap some place where I ain't even sowed, I ain't even planted nothing. You know I'm out here grinding, I'll go and I'll, I'll pull something up for nothing. You know how I get down as your master. You've seen the example that I set because you ran down who I am to me. So you knowing that, you literally would just take it and put it in the ground and not go try to make it sprout up. So you know I go and I gather from everywhere. And you mean to tell me you just set that kick up and just put it in the ground and say, here it is, master. Oh, you wicked servant. Read on the dome. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not straw. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with ursary. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him that have 10 talents. See, there's a lot of us gonna be waiting, thinking we're gonna receive something and we may be receiving even less than what we already got, thinking we're gonna get something because we have not done anything. This scares me. This scares me, Mr. McCall. Because I'm not talking about you all now. I'm talking about me. What have I done? I got to start doing more. It said to the one that had five, he had five more when he came back. You've done well, my good servant. To the one that had two. And he said, I'm going to make y'all rule. How can we be rulers over something and we're not starting to produce nothing? We're not starting to do nothing. But to the one who done nothing, he said, you wicked servant. Give me that what you got. Get on up out of here. And he gave it to the ones that already had something. So my encouragement tonight, Mr. McCall, that my goal and I hope that I'm reaching the mark is that we got to start producing some works. This word is more than a spiritual book. It is a book of wisdom, knowledge, understanding. It's a book of history. It is a, a book of vision. That's why the Tanakh is, is Torah. Nabi, which are the prophets. And the Ketubim, the writings. So it is the instructions, the visions, and the writings. It's already written now for us to be able to see how it was then. So we know what we need to be trying to do now. And we're behind the curve, but praise the most high for his mercy and do us forever. But let's not let us run out of time because we just keep sitting back saying his mercy and do it forever. And we don't start producing some works so that whenever a tribulation do hit, we have done something for him to say, well, look, my servants, y'all planted something. You got more than what you had before. That's going to sustain you. I'm going to make that last. But you ain't putting no work in, so why am I going to give you something? Y'all ain't done nothing. So, Mishma let us keep in mind what this study is all about. It's for us to increase in our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Most High, what uh, each Elohim is supposed to be to the most high, for the most high. We're supposed to be his servants. We're supposed to be his witness. We're supposed to teach the difference between clean and unclean. We cannot be respect, respect the persons in judgment. We have to start getting a structure, which a lot of men don't like, is structure and accountability. We have to have that so that we will know how to lead our people, how to provide for our people, and how to lead them back to the most high. And it's time for us to actually try to start walking together and producing some things. So I'm going to say this tonight, and the next time we have this call, I want it to be more of a meeting fashion, because Mishpaka, there's some projects that we have going on that we need help with. So meditate on these scriptures tonight. Uh, we got gift study next week, but the following week, uh, uh, I won't be going into it from the lesson perspective, but I will be doing it more of a mission to share more of the vision, to share some of the things that's been going on that we're trying to build and establish to even hear from you brothers of some ideals 
Um, also some projects that you might've been trying to work on that we don't know about. So we can see how the Most High leads us so we know what we can do to produce and to have. We need those who have business mindset to, look, to, to help us. Because one of the big issues in Israel is we need to make sure we put things together right. To have the, the, the written down, that, that's why the Most High told them, oh, Israel, yeah, write it down. Moses, have them write it down. We need to have those that are good at writing things up to write the points down, the things that we need to consider. We need to have a think tank to be going through uh, this scenario, that scenario. How do we answer this, that, and the third? How do we put these rules in place? How do we govern it to make sure that everyone is done righteously and fairly so that the people can be confident knowing that we've done it in a righteous manner? But it first starts with prayer to the Most High and some fasting. Of course, that goes. But we got to actually start doing these things, and we need help, Mr. McCarr. We can't do it alone. We need help to govern the people, to establish and provide for the people, to provide for us. And with that, Mr. McCarr, I'm going to yield, and I'm going to give the floor to uh, 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 Moray uh, uh, Kenya first. Uh, oh, that's not that's not uh, I, that's not Moray. I, I was thinking about Moray Benai. Uh, Kenya, I got his hand up first. So I'm going to give you the floor first, Adon, and then after that, I open the floor uh, to the Zakadine first, and then to the Morays that that's not Zakadine. Uh, to the mores afterwards, and then we're going to open to the other brothers. But since I, uh, uh, Kanaya had his hand up first, uh, the floor is not yours, Adon, I yield. Hallelujah. And uh, told I more right for uh, the message. Um, I love you, brothers. And, you know, this is this is why I show up, because I, I, I'm i being fed. My, my spirit is being fed uh, with the lessons that you all bring forth. Um, and I know that it's a whole lot more that I need to learn um and you know we can't ever have too much studying i don't i don't know i don't i don't think we can but uh you know i, I wanted to know uh and the message that you're bringing forth uh it sounds like different things that i've heard but but now say before also and and a similar message that he's brought to the body uh as well on different studies uh the distribute distri distribution of of work um you know, a lot of times it, it ends up being the same people. Uh, you know, we're we're trying to get a, a a committee together for our tabernacles, and we pretty much already know like who's going to be the doers uh, of the work. Uh, so, trying to find a way to motivate the body into becoming doers, where it's not all just on one man's hands. So, my question is, uh, if we can possibly, because my question. My question was getting ready to be a comment, and it kind of it would seem that I wasn't listening uh, with the comment that I was going to make. But the comment was going to be if you could bring this message to our to our body. But, you know, that kind of negates a lot of what you were saying with the message. You know, uh, you don't have time to do that all the time. Uh, right. So it needs to be somebody else. But I guess my question is, uh, I see that this is being recorded. You know, how would you feel if, if we presented this message to the body? Would that would that be okay? Um, Aki, uh, that would actually, uh, well, instead of this message, because it's more for the men for us to get activated, but, uh, and when we're saying busy, this is preparation to prepare others, but this type of topic that has to go forward, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So if ever the mores wanted to come on, we can present this again, because this is the vision that we have. I don't have an issue presenting it again. You know, and I already know uh, Mori uh, Benai can present it himself, but he may want me to come on. So if, if that's what Mori Benai and um, and uh, Adon Zadok want, uh, thank you for uh, uh, letting me know that it's inspired you. Because that's what we're supposed to do as, as co elite or preachers or those that teach. We're supposed to provoke thought and encourage. So if you felt it was encouraging, and if the Mori's want me to come on at some point, we'll schedule a time. Um, but I want us to start working with us first, because when we work, we want to already start having something to show them when we start to go and present, you know, which we already do have some things to show. So, you know, so uh, talk it over uh, uh, with your mores, uh, Adon, and I, I don't have no problem with it. You know, I don't have no problem with it. We can represent it, but I will present it a little bit more delicately because you have the sisters and all involved, as I was saying. So this is for the men, the men's study portion, uh, the way I delivered it, but I'll still deliver it in a way where they get the understanding of what's needed and necessary, but I'm trying to get us provoked so we can start doing it. And then once they start seeing the unity that we walk in, so if, if, you, if your mores uh, uh, want to uh, set it up at some point, 
Um, I have I have no issue with it. And total for your words, that don't and for you giving confirmation through the mo uh, for the most I using you to give confirmation that uh, the, the message was well received by you tonight. So uh, total y'all for you or don't. Um, so I have no issue. But again, doing all things decent in order. Check with uh, uh -huh. check with the mores and the mores. Let me know. And uh, and, and we have no issue with doing that. That that that's that's my duty, Adon. That's my duty. Come, come. Toda, toda, more. Yes, sir. Toda to you, Aki. Zakane so Lassimba, the floor is yours. Shalom, shalom. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Shalom, shalom, Zakane. Shalom, shalom. Um. Beautiful lesson as, as usual. It's, it's always good for, for, for what we bring forward, especially when it comes to the men's meeting. Um, I had a, and I'm, I'm almost sure everybody else, not everybody, but most of us should have, would have, would have seen or should have seen um, um, this brother be wise as a serpent and Calm of the, of the dove. I think that's the right way it goes. But um, I was talking about um, uh, this ex-football player who just had um, his his uh, Hall of Fame speech where he he brought forth the children of the book. He brought for us, uh, and the way he did it, he didn't come out and, and say we are we are we are Israelites or not. No, he 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 went around corners and and and. And the end of it, he spoke Hebrew, you know. So he he culminated everything that he was trying to say, even though they kind of screwed him over because he had a speech ready, and they hid his um, I won't say they hid, but they moved his his um, his laptop or whatever whatever it is he had there to to <clears throat> bring forward his proper speech. But even with that, he was able to to to. To be very subtle and 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 say all the things that he needed to say without putting himself in harm's way, like other people did, like Nick Cannon and all these other people who just want to say things and not have been proper backing. But he didn't need to do that. He just he was wise with what he did. He he said everything he needed to say, just not directly, but everybody know who knows exactly what he said. And that was so beautiful. And, and especially with the platform that he did it on. This is a Hall of Fame uh, show where millions of people look at, live and on TV. And he just, it was beautiful. I, I was happy to see that. The word is the word is being spread so much. One other little point that I, I had in my head for the longest while. Um, you look at Christianity, uh, from whenever they, they've been pushing it uh, as the new gospel on the earth. And the earth is in worse condition for the most part. But uh, as in the days of Noah, Noah had a different gospel trying to tell people that, listen, there's a flood coming, even though we never had rain before, rain is coming. They looked upon him as a, as, as a madman. What is this idiot building a, a boat on top of a hill for? This is as, as the, the, the gospel today is of Israelites being, the, we being the, the people of the book. We going on the corner, standing up preaching. We, we preaching this gospel, not what was before, this gospel throughout the earth right now. And it's just flowing. For me, this is the gospel that was told that in the last days, the gospel will be preached throughout the earth. And when every man hear it, the coming of the king would be. And I'm seeing that happening. And to what you were saying about um, needing help. For me, it's just a word. I, I just need to know what it is you want from me and I will try and make myself available. Are you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Total for your words, I can. And total for your, uh, you volunteering your services that you always do. So all praying to the most high. We're just trying to see how he's leading us and you know, as soon as we get more leading, we'll we definitely be in touch, most I will. And thank you, uh, Zakane. Okay. All right. Hallelujah. Any I'm other ready. other elders? Uh, have to, I'm giving it to the elders first, and I'm going to open it to the mores, but I'll let the elders speak first. Any other elders have any words? Okay, Zakane, Yaquab, floor is yours. 
Hold on, Maury. Um, hello, yeah, Tobe, Tobe, Tobe lesson. Um, I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna um, hearken unto that, that the last couple of verses we read tonight, you know, in Matthew, um, and 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 really, like you said, it's scary, but it 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 it, it makes me say, ouch, that you know his his slothfulness, uh, the one with the one talent, you know that that his master said. You know, we know the big picture, the the the, the master, Yahuwah, uh, you know, it said that was that was wickedness. You know, you you did nothing with the talent that I gave you. And 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 that was wickedness. Man, that's scary to me too. That's scary to me. Uh Tob to blessing, Maury. Toda Toda Zakain, Toda Toda, hallelujah, hallelujah. And, and you, you know, a lot of times I came like people, uh, they think when you speak in the word, you're speaking it to them. <laughs> but man, that word you're about to page us, it'd be hitting, you know what I'm saying? So that's why we we bring it forth with passion and concern, you know what I'm saying? Because hey, it'd be hitting. So total, total for your words, I came. So I came, you're you. Hallelujah. Uh, the floor is yours, I came, you're allowed you. I just want to say all praises to the most high. That was a, a beautiful, well crafted, um, message that hopefully all of us took heart uh into our hearing and um as 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 the other zakain just said that and you you said it, it's very scary to think about slowfulness and not being productive and it's one of the things i've been challenging myself to do do what i can do um while we still have this window of opportunity. And I just hope everybody realizes that yes, we we all got that struggle with a J-O-B and some have families and um, other cares of this life, but if we can just believe that we receive that extra uh, Samson, if you will, anointing, that uh, we can get that second wind and double up our efforts, um, to do what needs to be done and to come together and work in unity. And uh, I believe the Ruach HaKodesh will definitely uh, bless our efforts if we walk in the Torah. I just want to say to everybody, just be encouraged. Uh, this is not our strength that we're doing this in. It is the strength of the Most High. If we follow his directions, we'll get his results. Because he said in Jeremiah 11, that 29 and 11, that I know my thoughts towards you, Yashara. And that is to give you, uh, to bring you to or to give you an expected end. And that is a good, to be good and profitable servants by following his directions and his leadership through those who, through, through like uh, Moray Samad. Uh, and the other mores, Daoud, and everybody who was trying to get all of us on on one page. So let's please don't don't take this uh, for granted. Let's pray for an extra boost of strength, extra boost of unity, and uh, we have to have that that uh, ability to throw all of our talents into what we are uh, trying to accomplish. And uh, I believe y'all will be pleased if if we know that we are making a sacrifice in his name to do this. So I yield at that point. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I thought out for your words of wisdom, Zakane. And everyone, please always hear what uh, the Zakane always noises abroad. That needs to always be in the forefront of all of our minds that we do it in the name of Yah. We do it by the leading of Yah. You know what I'm saying? And we do it for Yah. And with that, we should succeed. If we ever make it about ourselves and let pride and selfishness ever kick in, It'll never make it anywhere. Anything we try to do would be destroyed. So that's his warning that he always puts out. Let us please heed that warning and make sure that it's in the forefront of our mind that everything has to be for the creator um, and for his will. And as Zaytan was saying, that we get that second boost. And that's why the most I tell us to gather ourselves together because when we get a little weak, when we come together, we give each other that boost and that encouragement to try to push harder. And that, that's why we encourage one another. So uh, total, total rabbi Zaytan for your words of wisdom always. Hallelujah. Uh, Zakane Eliyahu, the floor is yours, Adon. Shalom, shalom, Akim. Um, uh, Total Rabbah for this um, on point, very much needed uh, lesson. 
and um, it, it it tickles me and makes me laugh. Um, um, and I'm pretty sure you mores have experienced it as well. Uh, when something that uh, you've been dealing with or been talking about is is uh, reaffirmed and voiced uh, and expounded on uh, by someone else. And that's what this lesson has been um, this evening. Um, an admonition. We need to put forth our best at all time, at all time, doing it as unto Yahuwah. When I look at those servants, uh, according to the parable, uh, two of them did their best, and one did not. If that one had simply done his best, then his master would have been pleased with him because that was his best. And so I admonish each of us to always put forth our best in whatever it is that we are doing, especially as it pertains to the kingdom of Yah. Because I don't know if you realize it or not, but we are in a time where we are being exposed and or we are being proven. And I, like anyone else, am in a fleshly tabernacle subject to frailty. And like Moray has said, I, if I need to be corrected, I look forward to being corrected because I want to be uh, right before the Most High at all times. And with that said, if exposure comes to one of us or each of us, understand that it is the Father's will toward you to do good. That exposure, though, has to happen in order for self-correction to take place. And when he is proving, he already knows what the temperament of the metal is while the proving process is being enacted. Our enemy, on the other hand, will test because he does not know the results in advance. So I just want to leave that word with you and to however it is that it applies, use it. If it doesn't, chuck it. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Zakane. Thank you for always outpouring so much wisdom on us. And Mishbaka, uh, tie in with uh, Zakane Yeladi, who said, and Zakane Eliyahu into, uh, into one statement. Uh, when uh, Zakane Yeladi, who was saying, we got to try to must up, he know we got the jobs and all the stuff going on, but we got to must up and keep trying to kick in that extra, get that little extra gear in, even if we're tired. And as Zakane Eliyahu said, because we got to give y'all our best. And so that also is scary just to think that sometimes we just don't give them our best. So we got to try to muster that up. So let us like encourage one another and provoke one another to love and to doing our best. So again, that's what this is for. So if nobody else heed, heeded the warning that y'all gave through Zakane Eliyahu, I definitely just heard it. So ouch, uh, I, I got to keep trying to push through, push through. So y'all let's keep each other encouraged. Hallelujah. I told us I came. Um, before we move forward to the mores, sorry, did you have any words? I believe that's sorry that's on with us tonight. If you have any words, sorry, we will give you the floor. If not, we're going to move on. I'll tear it just for a moment, just in case. Would that be me you're speaking to, my brother? Yes, sir. No, no, I'm good right now. I was engaged in a different conversation. Okay. A pertinent issue, so I really didn't hear a lot of the conversation. So okay. please forgive me. No, no problem, sir. All right, mores. Any the mores? The floor is yours.
No, I can knock you out. The floor is yours. Moray, we don't hear if you if you're speaking, Moray. Told and very provoking lesson. I'm over here chewing on it myself, and I'm just uh, I'm just thinking and uh, just pondering the things that you put out. And uh, I just look forward to just any opportunity that I can to join in and help out with what we need to do to, to build. You know, and of course, I'm on this go around on my own. You know, new to this, but um, willing to just offer my my assistance and whatever I could do uh, in regards to to the effort for our people. And, and I thank all of you that, that share forth the wisdom that you put out, um, I'm, I'm greatly taking it in and absorbing it so that I can be of a benefit uh, to what this this work is for our Father Yah. So I just say, uh, Torah uh, for for that tonight, for the lesson. Torah, Torah for your words, uh, uh, Moray. Torah, Torah for your words. Um, before we close out, I give over the floor to everyone else. I'm gonna ask Maury Benayo, Zadok, if he's still on, if they have any words. That if not, I'm gonna open it to all the other Aki. I think Zadok might have got off. Uh, don't hit Benayo. Okay, he might be working still. All right. So if the Maury doesn't have any words, uh, Aki, uh, due to the sake of time, we're gonna try to uh, we open the floor up to the Aki. Uh, I, I know we normally do the quick one. We get each person, if you uh, have any words, um, you know, we'll give two minutes for comments for all the Akim uh, before we close out, just so we don't run too late. So if any other Akim um, have any words, uh, the floor is not open. Hello? I hear somebody, but I don't see. Oh, Zakane, I didn't see you. I, I forget you can't raise your hand, Zakane. Go ahead, Zakane. Uh, Kenneth, the floor is yours. Oh, uh, uh... Shalom, everybody. I'm just glad to be back on, on with the brothers. And uh, that was a very true blessing. I'm glad to hear it. And I look forward to being back with you guys. I've, I've been out for a couple of weeks, but I'm glad to be back on uh, and hearing this lesson. And I, I thank y'all for keeping me and getting me back with you, brothers. And I missed you, and I'm glad to be back. Thank you for the lesson. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise y'all for your life and uh, for blessing you, uh, Zakane. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, Yosef said, We love you to yourself. May the most high be with you, whatever it is that you have to attend to. We love you too, Adon. Pray that y'all be with you. All right. Is any other I can have anything before we get ready to close out? All right. Well, I came. I thank you all for tuning in. Um, tuning in with us. Uh, Zach, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, me out. Floor is yours, Adon. Shalom, Ray. Yeah, that was a really great lesson. Uh, honestly, because I know that's been that was the icing on top of the cake for me today. Because ever since I woke up this morning, I've been seeing little hints about what's coming in the future about the famine. And then um, you see what I uh, put up earlier in the group chat earlier about all the signs of how long they've been working to put what's been going on in motion today. Mm -hmm. This has been going on. They've been mm -hmm. planning this since over a decade. They're going, they don't plan by the year, they plan by the decade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you talking about this stuff tonight um, really motivated my Ruach and I said I thank the Father you know that's how his word is it's, it's that potent till you know that thing of, that thing that is like putting hot sauce on your tongue <laughs> wake you up like that you can't leave that thing alone they can't leave you alone so all praises for that and that just get me into the mindset of I need to get back into that storage mode because like you mentioned, when it popped off first last year, I was in the storage mode, but I kind of backed off as time went on. But now you got this thing vamping up after a year and it's only going to get worse, you know. So that just motivated me to go even further into it because I've seen a video earlier about, um, you know, the thing in Revelation where it talk about, you know, the famine and you had that that horse putting um people got sores whoever had the mark on and they trusted in the beast or whatever what 
you know, I'm not saying that this necessarily this or whatever, but it's got a real similar setup to it. So that's letting me know that, you know, what it acts, whatever it is, that's right around the corner. So that just motivated me to say, oh, I need to get ready even more. And I'm glad what you put out about, you know, us going from one place to the other, because ultimately that's what it's going to have to be. And, you know, for a lot of brothers, you know, um, for example, like new brothers, like when I came in, I would keep my hands off for like deep prophecy stuff that was super specific kind of, but at the end of the day, stuff like that, the paint, the picture is going to have to get painted sooner or later because, you know, the most high is the ultimate shepherd. And as the shepherd, he got to warn the sheep of what's coming and set up a path for them to get out the way when, you know, the bushes get cleared, so to speak. So all praise to him for that and total blessing. All the praises, all praises, all praises. Total for your words, Adon. Total for your words. Uh, Holland, the floor is yours, Adon. Gang, gang, shalom, shalom, all right. I just want to say Torah, yeah, for this lesson today. I don't, Torah for you, I don't, for this lesson. And I want a message to all the leaders on this line. When I say leaders, I'm talking about each and every one of you brothers on this line because each and every one of you brothers are taking the necessary step to be that light for our people, to be their leaders for our nation. So if, once we become the leaders of our nation and bring our nation back to the most high, then we could be that light to the other nations out there. So I, I commend all you brothers to stay strong. Um, be aware of the adversary. The adversary do not like that. We're going to be here coming together as Isha Elohim and trying to follow the most high. The adversary is going to try to come between one of us and try to use one of us. Um, for this, I, any dispute, any disagreement, I just want to let your brothers know that we're trying to do things in order, do things as, as our ancestors did. And any issue we have within us, we have a set of part council with elders, with leaders, so we could come to the conclusion of the matter, to solve the, solve the dispute, and then we could repent, and then we could have that brotherly love. So don't ever let the adversary become to what we have gone, you know, because the adversary don't like when we brothers come together. And then some of these nations don't like when we come together. They've been trying to be, break us down all the way back from the Willie Lynch letters. So, it's time to break that cycle, and I'm, I'm told out for you brothers for breaking that cycle and coming together as one. And um, if y'all see, I put in the group chat, if y'all decide y'all want to uh, do Sukkot with us, um, some of your brothers out there, we're doing Sukkot September 21st to the 29th. If you're not sure you want, if you're going to make it to Sukkot, still fill out the form so we can just have a head count. Because maybe at last minute, you might say, hey, I might just can't do show up to Sukkot. Is that we just need a head count. So if you if you did not turn in your form or fill out the form, um, that link right there I put in the chat is from a is, is our new uh, form to submit for your entry for Suco. Like I said, if you're not sure you can make it or not, still fill out the form just in case for last minute. And I want to say I love you, brothers. Thank you for our elders. I, I just love to see our elders is giving that wisdom to our younger generation. Love you. I, I yield. Shalom. Shalom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I told them for your words, Adon, if you're always keeping us all informed and trying to keep us all together. So I told y'all for your life, Adon. Hallelujah. Barak is Kodash name. All right, at this time, Mishpaka, we're going to get ready to close out. Um, and as he said, I, I, I second what Adon said. I love each and every one of you. May the Most High bless each and every one of your household. Um, as we come up into the Shabbat, may y'all have a wonderful Shabbat. Uh, as as it's coming upon us, so praise be to the Most High Yah. As I can, Eliyahu, uh, are you in a position where you can do the closing Tefla, sir? If so, can you close us out with a closing Tefla? Okay, okay. <sighs> Muhan, all hearts, all minds in agreement. Father, in the name of our Mashiach, we come before you. We love and adore you with everything that's within us, with all of our strength, with all of our being. We strive. We strive for righteousness and holiness. 
to be what you've called us to be. I ask that if there be anything that stands between you and us, a sin, a transgression, an iniquity, that you expose it in order that we deal with it and that you forgive us. I ask in remembrance of our four parents, all the way back to Kawa and Adam, that you pardon their sins, their transgressions, and their iniquities. Father, we stand in an hour at a point in history where decisions are being made to represent you, to stand boldly in the face of disarray, in the face of breakdown. We ask that you would energize your out cold ones to stand boldly and represent and not cower as the darkness approaches. Understanding that the light that you have called us to be and that you have put within us must shine brightly, has to shine brightly. And by the empowerment of your Ruach HaKodesh, according to scripture, because we know your name, because we know whose we are, we will do exploits because we believe you for our all sufficiency in the face of mounting lack. When you brought us out into the wilderness where there was nothing, we looked to you, you proved us, you humbled us so that we would know that man does not live by bread alone. So we hinge our total existence on every word that you have ever uttered that we must yield to and put in operation in order that our lives and the lives of those with whom we have to do will be and can be affected for the better. For you have not placed us at this stage of history without purpose. Help us to realize our purpose and fulfill the mission that you've given each of us and collectively as a people. I believe you, Father, because your word declares it. In spite of what I hear, in spite of what I see, in spite of even what I may feel, that hasn't a thing to do with it. If you said it, it's done. Your word is bond. So I ask that each and every Akim on this line, on this call, and even those that would be joined to us would get what it is that you've called us to do so that we can be about the work. Protect our families. Protect our minds. You've given us instruction in your word saying that if we were to keep our minds stayed on you, on your word, dwelling on it, meditating, cogitating on it, that it would keep us in perfect peace. 
So when everything and everyone else around us is losing their heads, we stand strong in you. Our resolve is to go forth in your might. For apart from you, we can do nothing. So I thank you in advance that you've empowered each of us to be about the business at hand. I thank you in advance that no weapon formed against us can prosper. I thank you in advance that you have a wall of protection around us. Your word in Psalms 91 declares it. I stand firm on it. I thank you in advance for rejuvenating our bodies, for protecting our bodies from all of this stuff that may be in the air, may be in the soil, may be in the water, wherever it may be, seen and unseen, known and unknown. I thank you that you protect that which is yours. And Father, we are yours. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah. I thank you, Father. In the name of Yahusha, our Mishiach. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of Yah. Baruch Hashem, Yahuwah. Toda, toda, as I came. Toda, as I came. Akim, I love you all. May the Most High watch over, bless, and protect, and keep you all safe. Continue to strengthen you with his Ruach and continue to strengthen you in his word. I look forward to when we can come together again. Uh, Y'all continue to remember to support each other. You know, uh, Amore Benai and, uh, and Zadok, they have uh, the daily bread at noon um, each day and at 6.30. Let us continue to support one another and encourage one another so we can continue to do our best for the Most High. So uh, I'm going to say uh, Shalom, Shalom, Laila Tov, Mishmaka. Shalom, shalom, Lila Tov. Let us continue to grow in y'all together. May y'all get some rest, Aki. Shalom, shalom, Lila Tov. Shalom, shalom, shalom.